metal in some of this ash. And we don't have a metal detector in our sawmill. I think I got a somewhat of an idea to figure out how to get us a hillbilly made metal detector in there. So a guy ain't out doodles and goblets of money. Ah, those address sucks on a bandsaw hitting metal. Alright, so what we got going on today is Eli had to take off. He had to get him go to the doctor for his uh, hip. He's got a hip issue. And uh, which left me left us a loader man short today. And then said, do you want to... I've been cutting timber on this... Uh, I, mean, I hand cut yesterday on this. I uh, did a bunch of bush pull trees and stuff yesterday on this landowner we're working on. Really good landowner. Uh, but uh, this morning, hell, I still got a chainsaw ring in my pocket, but now I'm running a loader today. So, uh, let's see. Poplar, poplar, poplar. And I'm not the slickest at sorting logs. Now, what you do when you bring logs in, those of you don't know, is you take your species you gotta sort it out. Cause when you sell your lumber, you're selling it as a lot. So they want a certain grade of lumber off of a certain species and they'll send you a PO and then you saw out that PO, that's how it works. So you have to start, it starts by separating your logs. Now, when Joni's caught up in the yard in the, in the woods running the uh, cat boom, sorts up but uh she don't uh, for some reason she don't sort much I, I, I try to sort i try to push on her sort a little more all the time because a knuckle boom can sort way better than a wheel loader any swing machine is going to sort way better than a rubber tire machine but she's in the heat of battle too you know so i mean it's not just black and white She's got to keep the wood moving. She's got a lot of people depending on her. And when she, what she's looking at, she's got a lot of people depending on her in the woods to keep that yard, keep that shoot clean, heading to the woods, heading to the yard in the woods. Sorry, I'm focused. So she's like, well, a loader's a one-man operation. You know, through that, but you got to cheat every chance you get because it's adding cost. Any double, triple handling's adding cost to anything. She always got to weigh them odds, and she's doing that on her end. So, and in shorter wood, it gets, it gets harder to sort because this little short stuff just runs a big wheel loader to death trying to sort it out. Let's on there, so drive me nuts. All right, let's see. Popper, 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 poppy, pop, popper. Is that popper ash? Nope, popper. And that is gum. Got some bubble gum in there. And that's where we're at. And I love this. Their 624K. I love this wheel loader. This is a gum. This is a walnut. We're getting all kinds here. trying to put her walnut and her gun together. Joni, what are you doing? See, if you look up sorting, I've been reading audio books and stuff. You go into sorting, I did a book on uh, that studied sorting. And if you have a smaller amount of differences to sort, you can sort way quicker. When you got too many things to sort and sorting gets the efficiency of sorting goes way down. I don't know what that log is. I'm gonna have to. I think it's a poplar, but I got an ash stuck in here. I'm gonna have to get out of the mix here. And we're sawing ash, so I'm trying to get some ash loose and take it to the skids because uh, we're about to finish the ash up. And I want to run this poplar to the pile. I got enough of a clamp pull. Ah, uh, there's some up here. I'll add these to it. Well, I had one of them too. <laughs> but this loader 
motor is a 624 kr we got this thing a while back and i absolutely love this thing it can carry a freaking pile of wood smooth and uh, it's got the heavy duty rear ends in it so because with our job with our type of loader operation here that we do in our company we're uh that's not that's with our type of loader operating i'm not you familiar with the yard so i gotta kind of look for my piles i don't know where all that oh no don't you start that falling stuff boy that pile looks like crap I like it what was i getting at yeah i gotta look for my piles Oh, when you get this thing set up, man, you can carry a wall of wood. Just a daggone pile of it now. This loader is something else. I love this thing. Come in sleep. Now this gun, we're getting towards the end of this run. So we're going to throw this over the top. And these are all poplars. these to the stack and I'm hauling smaller amounts while oh, I'm sorting now the way you sort is you throw a log here throw a log here throw a log here try to try to get them pumped up together so at least you're packing somewhat of a load because with the wheel loader it's kind of inefficient to sort anyways and then when you get your big pile when you get your somewhat of a clamp full then you head to the log you don't double handle that and you head onto the rig. Boy, these short logs are aggravating. They're not cleaned up real well. We got a Bark King head on a knee barker. I don't know if it's... There's a lot of mixed emotions there. I ain't gonna say whether it's right or wrong. But we can chomp up these knots and stuff. So we don't slow the woods down because you're dealing with weather out in the woods. So we're not, trying not to slow the woods down any more than we have to to make the logs perfectly clean. We just kind of wing it, get them close, and bring them in. And then let that barking head on that debarker kind of gnaw some of the knots off. Now, we try. You should not never give up in the woods and just send in crap. But you kind of got to roll with the punches there. Especially the rubber tire cutter. We got a rubber tire cutter we run out in the woods, and that thing, it sends stuff in kind of you know, it can't clean it up real well, so you're sending some trash to the yard. Sloppy topped for the boom to have to deal with. Now, the idea here is I give me a pile. When I come back from feeding the skids, I'll grab me a scoop and head to the pile while I go get another clean. So you're kind of making a return trip. Getting a backhaul, getting paid both ways. Now you can still screw the brakes up on this loader. This is kind of a downhill run heading to our uh, skids. Oh yeah? Oh, Pooh's gonna love that. Eww. There you go. Can't say I never gave you nothing. here a couple logs there you don't want this big freak ginormous daggone wheel loader like you see out west 
moving around with a little eight foot piece of pulp wood. You know what I mean? You got a big loader, you want to load her up because that's the only time you're fishing. If you're driving around with nothing on the forks, that's a, you're just moving a bunch of steel. You're just paying diesel fuel, moving a bunch of steel. Of course, the way everybody looks that day, you're destroying the earth environment, people's dying, everything. Yada yada, global warming, all that mess. So, you try to size your loader up to where, you know, it ain't too big, but it's just, but it's big enough to be productive. And this thing, in my opinion, is perfect. Now, if the logs was pre-sorted, I think you can do a 644, but if the logs ain't pre-sorted, I think it's about as big as you want to go. And just in my opinion, let's see, that's popper, popper, ash. Oh, we got everything right here. This is bag on smorgasbord here. Perry's like, you gonna need to put some wood on them skinner and get bitty. All right, I'm a big four, I hear you. Let's see, both of them is waller nuts. And I'll come back after that ash here in a minute. so smooth and what it was was there's an old military loader you can see that front here it's made to where you can take the cage off the top of it i guess put it on a naval ship or whatever and uh god i love this thing we paid a hunt with a new set of rockland forks and rockland combination forks and grapple uh man we got a good looking log, log yard right now we gave uh 130 i think thousand we gave a chunk for it. That ain't walnut there ain't no way she's got that much walnut sitting around. Where the heck's the walnut? Why is she separating her gun? Where's that walnut at up here? They got it down low, maybe? Get this walnut off here, I'll bring you some logs. <laughs> He's saying yeah, it up the veneer down there. The regular saw logs is with the veneer? Thank you, old buddy. I'll get rid of this old buddy and I'll frame some wood here. He's gonna get aggravated at me. Is he barking his last log now? <laughs> They'll catch back up. Look out, Jason. I'm coming through, old buddy. <laughs> oh. See, we put this walnut down here so the sun don't beat the crap out of it. It takes you all to come up with a mess of walnut. You don't want the sun beating the crap out of it. Making it check up and screw up because this are mostly this is black gold right here. This walnut is. I know it don't just look like plain old logs, but the consumers and the powers that be wants this stuff something awful. And there's supply and command of it. There's not enough supply to feed the command. <laughs> Rick, but I got his truck parked right in the way. I unloaded it this morning. 
Larry and Chris, they're gonna do maintenance on Robin's truck today and Derek's truck today. And I guess I'm going to Woods maybe to sling chainsaw again or I don't know what after first break happens. I tell you, with this modern way of doing stuff, you gotta be loose enough to do about any job. I just supplement everybody else. Well, whoever needs whatever they need, I do it for them. You know, and then uh, when we get a full crew, I'll go do I'll do maintenance and mechanic and do my job. the best at it so Rick and Ball just assume me not file unless I need to because uh, he can't quite saw as fast with my bands as what he can with his them guys they just know their stuff you know and I'm kind of green I'm a rookie now this ash and popper I could probably I could probably run my bands just fine but they ain't quite up to power Eli put them on there cross-eyed and then uh, tell you how good a care I take of you. debarker right now let me break in here real quick the carriage that runs the debarker it runs back and forth it's got a drum with a cable spooled up on it and a snatch block on the end for like a tail hold and it'll run through come back and this drum turns one way excuse me or turns the other way and the carriage is connected to it and it just rings her back and forth that's how it's set up it's a hydraulic operated and uh, there's a crossboard valve, there's a valve inside the cab. This debarker's got some premature or antique valves in it. Uh, we need to re up uh, on our debarker sometime. But this valve's falling apart on the inside. Well, it's making a little bit of metal. And that metal runs down through the system. And now, those of you that's not familiar with the way a crossport valve works, uh, you'll see these aluminum blocks. And uh, they go in the in the in the the, the outie hose goes, and the any hose goes. You know, both through this block. So oil's running back or forth through this block. All right. When it hits too much back pressure, it'll crack a uh, it'll crack a pop it there, and dump the oil off, dump the pressure oil, crack and dump the pressure oil into the return line. Depending on whichever way you're running it, the cross port can work either way. So. Well, what happens is sometimes if you're making metal in your hydraulic system and you and you pop your cross port, well, a little chunk of metal gets stuck in there and gets stuck inside that thing and it won't slam shut. So it's stuck, cracked open, so it's just dumping off your oil. 
You can't make pressure. That's what he's going on about. Well, the next day I come in there at the big, because we bro broke, took the debarker down the next day when the pallet room was running. We was going to try to fix it, and I found out. He said, well, I'm telling him, whipping my knowledge on these guys, and then Pooh looks at me and goes, well, Rick and Ball said check that crossport valve. I said, well, if you want to check the stupid thing, we'll check it. I pulled the thing out, and it was, sure enough, there's a piece of metal stuck in it. Damn, bumps it on. rides each other all the time so what the deal is is a lot of us out there has side gigs here i am doing this youtube thing as a side gig and uh uh Pooh lives on a farm and he's a he's a, a he's a farmer now the kind of farming he does he's heavy to they do all kinds of farming but he he's heavy uh his little part of it his part of it i shouldn't say little it ain't little by any means but his part of the farm is he runs kind of a feedlot. And uh, he brings cows in, feedlot, does stuff. He hauls cattle for all kinds of people in the county. I mean, he does, he's busy. So his side gig, he's real busy. And he's always, this guy is working. I I think I ride him like crazy, but I thank the world of this guy. Um, but he's always busy and always doing his thing. And... Uh, He's always on my butt because the YouTube don't pay. You know, it's my side gig that don't pay. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm always come up with these stupid ideas and tell him, like, I'm going to make it big now. This is going to be my big thing, Pooh. I'm going to make it big. So we're down here working on this. Our farm is, we got a beautiful view on, on our farm here at home. But thank God we got a beautiful view because the farm is freaking poorer than crap. It can't grow nothing. You know what I mean? So, so I told him I figured out how I struck it rich. Now I got this mini den, and I got old Sergeant Pants. I'm going to dip these rocks out. I'm going to start rock farming. So I'm going to be a rock farming tycoon, and that's what he's he's getting on me. He said, well, why don't you sell some of that rock money and get in there and fix this damn debarker? <laughs> Just mad, Mikey, because I'm a professional rock tycoon. <laughs> he always goes on about the farm, and he's good. <laughs> Sycamore here. 
Let's throw him off the side and get more pop. Thank you. 